All right, here we go. All right, today we want to talk about relationships. And it's, it's an important subject because everything we do as humans has something to do with relationships. Since we are not on the planet alone, and more than likely, you haven't gone through your life alone. It's important to recognize that there are other people on the planet, and you're going to have to learn how to get along with them. Relationship is so important. I'm going to tell you how important it is. Relationship is so important that at some point, at some point in time, you're going to run into a situation that requires you to do something that has to do with someone else. If you don't believe it, if you have an apartment, you have established a relationship. Yeah, you, you've established one with the realtor or the uh, apartment manager, whoever owns it. Because a lease is a legal relationship. Then you have a, uh, at least on a, a social level, you have neighbors. Now, how actually uh, close or distant you are depends on who you are and who they are. So first, before we get started, we want to get a workable uh, definition of relationship. It's always important that, um, that we establish baseline. Whenever we're having any conversation at all, okay, and what's, what's really important to me, and I'm sure it should be important to you, is that whenever you're having a conversation with anyone, <clears throat> Whenever you're having a conversation with anyone, it'd be nice to uh, understand where they are. It'd be nice to understand uh, how they are arriving at their conclusions. Because if they don't, if you don't, there's a chance that whatever you're talking about won't be communicated well. So, I'm going to share my screen. Let's talk about relationship. Let's get a workable definition for relationship. Let's see if I can enlarge this some. I don't know if you can see that, but relationship. <clears throat> this is from the Sage, and uh, this is a an awesome dictionary. Um, what it does is that you can um, you can find nearly any word written, and you can find it in different ways. You can also look online as far as that goes, all right? So let's talk about it. Uh, the number one definition is a relation between people, okay? So it goes right into 
the human piece. Now, there are many other things that have a relationship. And you uh, develop a relationship based on certain dynamics. Uh, similarities always um, are always a good indicator of relationship. For example, I have this bottle here, right? And if you look at the bottle from the top, what do you see? You see a circle, right? Another object. My nice trusty flashlight. Right? What do you see? You see a circle. See, sometimes we we'll get we'll get too deep before we get simple. Okay. Everything that is has a relationship with everything else. You might not want to believe that. But it's the truth. So when you start talking about what you like about this, what you like about that, all you're doing is just talking about what you think of whatever that object is. But the very uh, fact that you're in proximity, proximity is a relationship. Position. Relationship by position. How did you arrive at this place that you two could be in the same place at the same time? Now, we have been we have been led to believe that having a relationship, it's only one thing. It's only getting together physically. It's only getting together emotionally. Well, there are different types of relationships. Okay. We want to talk about the human element. Well, your first relationship is the one you have with God before you became who you are, before your mom and dad came together and shared chromosomes, okay? And uh, you were placed in a, a special place in your mom's, your mother's womb. God had a relationship with you. He was the one that determined who your parents were going to be. Well, Y'all are not listening. So we're not trying to get metaphysical. And, and like I say, um, talking about God. Let's talk about our Heavenly Father, our Universal Father, the source, the origin of all things. If we, I think if we go with that, we can probably have a more productive relationship because some people see God in different ways. The minute I mention God, I'm sure that, you know, what it conjured is, okay, Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalian, uh, Holiness, um, Catholic, and then there's different church organizations. That, that you get involved in. We don't want to do that. We don't want to talk about the Father, the source and origin of all things. And so in doing that, you shed the names and you shed the titles and you come right down the brass tacks. Okay. There is a central force that is responsible for all of us being point blank. All right. So it started there. Then you had a relationship with your mother. OK. You had a relationship with your mother before you knew anything was anything. She was carrying you around. So what kind of relationship did you have with her? A nurturing one. She was responsible for protecting you, carrying you around. And you ate typically what she ate. Now, when you got to the point that you could hear. Your relationship with the outside world began. You can look it up. You can look it up. Child, the ears. Soon, God is so ma uh, magnificent that when it, you might not have known what you were hearing, but soon as your ears were formed, they started working. So think about it like this: four months along, that, that's in the second trimester. In the beginning of the second trimester, you began to hear, and so how many months did you stay in the womb? Most of us stayed in eight. Little, little more than little more than eight, probably nine. On the curve, most of us were at eight and a half, eight and a half to nine and a half months. All right. So you listen to, uh, you heard music, you heard uh, likely, hopefully, you heard your father. You didn't know it was him, but you recognized the voice. 
because it was a voice you heard regularly. If you had siblings, okay, their voices were heard as well. Um, if you had a dog that barked, the baby, you heard the barking of a dog. You didn't know it was a dog. You didn't know it was your brothers and sisters. You didn't know if it was your dad. You didn't know it was your mom. But you heard something. You heard sound. And the sound started your orientation in the family. So when you were born, guess what? Those voices were not strange. They weren't foreign. See, the relationship with your siblings started a long time before you actually met them. Just like your relationship with your parents started a long time before your parents got together. And so we, we have to understand that there's always a pretext and a precursor. But once you get it together, once you get it together, now it's not the point of establishing it. The point of a relationship is nurturing it and maintaining it. See, most folks think that we, that we establish. No, the, the relationships are already established. We're just waiting for what? Proximity. We're waiting to be in the same place. A lot of people miss their mates. They were in proximity, but you know what? Something was going on. Something was happening. And they passed like ships in the night. Right? Now, what determines the quality of relationship? Well, remember, remember what I said. There is a pathology. You started with your mom. Then you heard the voices. Then you saw the faces. You put faces to the voices. And then as you got older, you've had certain experiences. Okay? And I'm getting to some. You had certain experiences. With those experiences, your powers of analysis, okay, however, whatever way they came, started to affect how you take, take knowledge, how you take knowledge and process it. And because you take knowledge and process it a particular way, that's going to determine how you, what, secure relationships and keep them. Because God created everything. I, I want you to understand. Before you came, stuff was here. All right? So, so don't think for one minute that there's anything special created for you. No. That's not how that works. You are here, it's here. So all God is all God is doing is providing proximity. Now, we all have choices that we make based on our experiences, coupled with our knowledge, coupled with our training. What do you mean? What do I mean by that? How you how and excuse me, how you know a thing, okay? How you know a thing is by what? Your exposure to it, okay? You look down on the ground and you see an eight-legged creature, okay? If nobody told you that was a spider, you'd just say it was a big bug, okay? Then you get some knowledge. You've seen that creature in a book somewhere. Somebody told you it was a spider. You put the two pieces together, and that must be a spider, all right? Now, what do you know about a spider? Well. You know spiders spin webs. How do you know that? Somebody told you they did it. And so then in the natural, you see it and it validates your claim. Okay? So when it comes to how we approach each other, we approach each other on that same premise. Most folks are actually making a connection with things they've already seen. And why is that important? That's important because most men Choose women that are like women they've seen before. Okay? Familiarity is the key. All right? Now, even if on a higher level, listen here, it gets richer. Even on a higher level, the type you haven't seen before. But there's an energy thing that's happening. There's an attraction that's happening. And it's not based on anything you've known. You've read or you've seen. I like to call that fluidity. All right? We have a certain, what? Emotional and intellectual fluidity. I was watching the, the, um, the series 
buried at first sight. And it brought something to me. Most people will go to dating sites, okay? And they're looking at some pictures, and the person is answering the questionnaire, saying they like this, they like that, they like this, they like that. And so based on what that person says they like and don't like, we say, okay, well, that might be somebody that I can have a relationship with. Why? We have similar tastes. We have, you know, similar likes, dislikes, this, that, and the other. You get together and you fight like cats and dogs. What just happened? According to the science, you should be compatible, right? But you forget fluidity. See, there are times when you have a really good relationship with somebody, or I say situation, you have a really good situation, and somebody asks you, uh, what do you like about them? And you say, there's something I can't put my finger on. I really can't describe it. Hmm, amazing, right? I really can't describe it. What that is, that is fluidity. Most of the good situations in here, most of the good situations have that. Have a fluidity to the point that there are some things that are not important. And I'm tapping into that thing and I'm going to hold on to that thing. Being spiritual is something like that. Are you listening? Being spiritual is something like that. See, because you have never seen God. Most of us in this time haven't seen Jesus. We have a depiction, okay? And there's some speculation as to the genuineness and the authenticity of that image. In fact, there are sources that tell you exactly who that picture is. But the reality is, is that it's the concept. You see, you don't realize that you're actually following a concept, okay? And what people do, what people tend to do, is people paint their saviors and heroes to look like them, okay? It doesn't say that it's authentic. It just says that that's their hero, all right? So when we're talking about, when we're talking about um, relationships and relating. We can go down all of the physical steps. We can go down all of the physical nomenclatures. We can go down all the physical uh, situations. But then there's something that happens. It just happens. And you can't put your finger on it. You know what? You can't even control it. It's that very thing that makes you think about somebody when you're not there. It's that very thing that makes you have a passion for this, for this individual who you never had a passion for anything or anyone else. Like I said, I like to call it fluidity. And in that fluidity, that is what we as righteous people call the Holy Spirit. The, the letter killeth. In other words, the, the, the words that we write are dead. And it doesn't matter which, even the Bible. The Bible's dead until you put it in you and you start acting it out. Then it becomes real. And that's what the world needs to see. The world needs to see the reality of God's word through our conduct. When that doesn't happen, guess what? You get people who are disgruntled. You get people who get angry, people that don't want to go to church, people that criticize and say that Christians, Christians are hypocrites. No, they're not hypocrites. They just haven't shown the principles they learn. Does that make them a hypocrite? No, it makes them deficient <laughs> at best. So. When we're talking about relationship understand there's a fluidity that happens. If that's not happening, okay, see us as us as uh, dark dark Americans, we call that vibe. We call that a vibe. You get a vibe, okay. Once you have that vibe, it doesn't matter whether the person's big or small. It doesn't matter how much the person it makes. It doesn't matter how educated they are or not educated. It doesn't matter what they do for a living. It doesn't matter where they come from. It doesn't matter about anything because fluidity bypasses all of our physical attitudes, appetites, nomenclatures. It just bypasses. So 
in trying to develop a relationship, we examine all those physical things so that we can find something familiar because being physically comfortable is important. It's important. But it's not as important of having what? The vibe, being part of that vibe, having that, that level of comfortability that says that, you know, it doesn't matter what's going on with you. Now, we ain't going to be foolish. If a person's just crazy, crazy meaning have I and have an inability to accept their present reality. Yeah, crazy. Crazy as opposed to having mental illness. It's different. Okay. There ain't no pill for crazy. Okay. The only cure for crazy. The only cure for crazy is experience. Hate to say it like that, but it is what it is. Now, if you have schizophrenia, if you have depression, if you have, uh, if you're bipolar, if you're OCD, yeah, there's some medication that might be able to help that. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to learn how to manage your emotional state. You have to put up some dams for all that fluid. You have to contain some of it. And you're going to have to rehearse some stuff in your head. So as we as we come on down this thing, remember we have... We've, we've examined the individual. We've looked at all of their attributes and, and we found those things that we're familiar with. And there's enough uh, pro that we can override the con. Then there's the fluidity piece. The fluidity piece um, it says that I want to make this permanent because it fits both of you very well. And you begin to recognize that there is a role that I play in this person's life and there's a role that they play in my life. And I'm comfortable with that. Now, once you get the relationship piece down, watch this. It, once that happens, the marriage has begun. Are you listening? The marriage has begun. Marriage in the West, listen to me carefully. Marriage in the West is an institution. That makes any sense to you. Okay. Anything you got to be licensed to get into is not, not a relationship. It's an institution. Okay, now, what should happen in a marriage? I'd like to go back to my friend, the sage. And I found something very, very, uh, very, very that we want to look at. All right. Now, I want you to look at this last definition right here. Okay, I want you to look at that last definition. A close and intimate union of different elements, actions, or events. Okay. We talk about that fluidity. All right. Fluidity makes it easy for you to understand those things which are present in your partner. It also tells you how you need to handle it. Okay, now I found something that was interesting. I found something that was interesting. And I, I want to show this to you because I think that many people misunderstand this whole institution. All right, now institution are things that what humans get involved in that help to what? Maintain the cohesiveness of a society, all right? So when you get, when you get to the point where you are married, there's some things that become critical, all 
right? Some things that become really critical. And, and when you understand this, many of you are going to look at this and you're going to say, you've got to be out of your mind. <laughs> for this, for my Bible app to come up. You're going to say, Bishop, you are out of your mind. I'm here to tell you that I was out of my mind until I learned the truth. And it helped me to understand how, how I needed to deal with my spouse and why it's in place the way it's in place. It's moving slow today. Maybe because I'm getting ready to expose something. You know, every once in a while it gets like that. Whenever you're on the uh, on the blessing, you're on the brink of a blessing, and all of a sudden something happens. Try to hold it up. But today, not gonna be that. When I show you this, right, now, what I don't happen is people to start rethinking their partner, but rather to start rethinking how they are dealing with their partner, all right? All right, come on. Here we go. All right. You want to say that the devil is a lie, but you already know that, right? <laughs> we want to say we want to say Satan's gonna have a little bit of trouble with this one, but we already know that, right? All right. Look up the word Mary. I want y'all to see what I'm doing. And I, I want you to I want you to grab onto this. And you know, we want to help each other. Okay, we want to help each other to be better as believers. All right. So let's put Mary in the search. Now, I want you to look at look at how many look at how, at how many places this is found. It is found in 19 verses. All right, listen to me carefully. Are you listening? Right. This is found in 19, 19 verses in the Bible. All right. Now, because this is God's institution, we want to deal with it. In a way, he deals with it. All right. Now, if you're not a, if you're not a believer, you might have a few views with this. All right. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna open this up some more because I want the search. Now, if you have a Strong's exhaustive concordance, all right. If you have a Strong's exhaustive concordance. Then this ought to be this lovely for you because you can look these words up. That in the Schofield, they have the same numbers. Now, watch this. See these numbers up here in the corner? See these numbers up here in the corner? Mary is used in a bunch of different ways in the Bible. So we have to keep it in context. Okay. This one says the first one, Genesis 38 and 8, it says, Judah, and Judah said to Onan. Go into thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to your brother. What did he just say? Okay. Mary here perform the duty of a husband's brother. Yabam. Can you see that? Okay. Yabam. Okay. Now, basically, Yabam meant 
to take your brother's place, take a person's place, okay, in the institution of marriage. This is about culture, okay? Wasn't about passion, wasn't about whether he loved him or not, loved whatever, okay? Now, let's go down to the next one. Now, the next one, Numbers 36, verse 6, it says, This thing which the Lord does command concerning the daughters of Zelophad, Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry. Right? Now, here it is again. Remember, there are two, there are two definitions that are attached to that word. Haya. Not as in haya as in karate. Okay. Mary. Mary here means to exist with. Okay. To exist, that is to become, come to pass, not a mere couple or axillary. Okay. Okay. So basically, he's talking about live with them, just exist with them. Okay. What? To whom they think is best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry, what, exist, become, come to pass, live with them, okay? Now, notice we have these two numbers, write these two numbers down. These are the Strong's numbers, and, you know, these are the Hebrew translation, 2992, then there's 1961. And there's used there again, Deuteronomy 25 and 5 uses what? 1961 again, okay? If a brother and dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not what? Exist or live without, uh, outside of the, look at, outside with unto a stranger, under a stranger. Husband's brother shall go in unto her. So, in other words, she can't go outside of the outside of the culture. Don't go with stranger. Okay. Now, it starts to get rich from here. Are you ready? The prophet Isaiah. Remember something. The prophet Isaiah is talking to God. The prophets are talking to God. They're getting God's words. So, in the first ones, we're talking about law. We're talking about rules that govern the community and the culture. Now, when we talk to the, uh, with the prophets, we're talking straight from the mouth of God. And here's another one. For as a man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons what marry thee. As the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall God rejoice over thee. Mary here is Baal. Y'all listen here now. And this is going to sting a little bit, okay? God's idea of marriage has a hierarchy and an order. What is that order? It says a young man marries a virgin. A young man marries a virgin. So shall thy sons marry you as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so God rejoices over you. So in other words, what's happening here is God is saying to the man, to rule the woman. This is what it says. I didn't write this. This is God's word. This is according to him, this is what God said. It says to be a master, hence to marry, to have dominion over. Listen here now. This is, y'all can screenshot this. You can do whatever you want. I hope you go back and you do your research and you and you'll see that it's it is what it is. Okay. God wants the man to be clearly in charge of the family. All right? Now, all of those who, the naysayers that, you know, was, oh, well, he don't know what he's talking about, and, you know, this, that, and the other. And I'm saying, you know, listen here, folks. There's, there's a time when, you know, you have to say things the way they are. All right? And so here it is, you know, he's talking about, um, you know, the relationship. See, and, and you notice that he's talking about the um, the end times, which we're, we're happening to be getting close to. So 
We want to govern our relationship based on what God said. What did God say? Man rule the wife. All right? Now, one, two, three, four, all right, five. Now, New Testament, all right? Mary. Here, Mary is given a as it were, a balanced connotation. Okay? It's given a balanced connotation. So, basically what Jesus was trying to say here is that there needs to be a mutuality in the situation. There needs to be a degree of mutuality. Okay? Which elevates this from a, from a situation to an institution. Does that make sense? Okay. Anytime something becomes universal, it starts it and and it reaches the level of ubiquity. In other words, it everybody it applies to everybody. Okay. It would have to be something that is a shell, not the inner workings. Okay. The word is gamel, which means to wed. Okay, specifically marry a wife. So there we go again. There's a choosing and somebody is doing the choosing. Okay. Let's go to the next one. All right, here we go again. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, adultery, and whosoever marrieth her that is put away commits adultery. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm clearly looking at this phrase that says, put away. Okay? It say divorce. It didn't say divorce. Up here, divorcement. Okay? Apostasion. The neuter of what? Adjective meaning properly separative, that is, divorce, divorcement. So this is, this says, let him do that. According to this, if you read this and put it in context, being away is different than being divorced. Being put away, notice he didn't say who shall divorce wife. It says, put her away. What does that mean? Apaluo, to free fully, that is, literally, to relieve, release, dismiss, or figuratively, let die, pardon, or spe it says specifically, divorce. But see, that can't be right. See, if you're talking about putting away, and you talk about divorcing, a divorced woman went back home. She didn't have access. To someone else, and then it says what, and show what, and show marry another. So what did it? So what did that mean? Let's talk about going back to that day and time. There were a lot of people. Um, if, if those of us who are are familiar with other faiths, there is a faith that says that if you want to call, uh, declare a divorce, all you had to do is go into the temple in front of everybody and declare the divorce. And it was done. No documentation, no paperwork. No. It's just done. Okay? But here, it's different. Because Jewish people, okay, you couldn't get a divorce except it be for what? Fornication or adultery. And that had to be proven. So here you're talking about what? Putting his wife away. Sending her out. Just sending her out. Okay? So if she's committing adultery, if, if, if marrying her, marrying him or her, can cause you to commit adultery, 
okay? And that meant that this marriage had to happen twice. Are you listening? If they were divorced, the deal is completely done. If they get remarried, it's, it's only one. But in order for it to happen, in order for this to be factual and right, the marriage would have to happen twice. So this ain't. If you put her away, if you put her away except for adultery or fornication, and shall marry another. So this one wasn't really finished yet. It's just the appearance of it being finished. By you kicking them out. Okay? Are you listening? So, why is, it, why is this so important today when we're talking about relationship? Well, let's go back to Isaiah. Words don't change because we change. What God means something, what God means is what it is. And it doesn't matter what your dialect, it doesn't matter your, your, your persuasion, it doesn't matter your, uh, your language, it doesn't matter your culture. What God said it is, that's what it is. And marry means to rule. You heard that, to be a master. Also. To take a wife. So watch this. <laughs> when a man gets on his knee and says, Will you marry me? What did he just ask that woman to do? Y'all talk to me. What did he just ask her to do? He asked her to be master, to have dominion over, be husband. So with that single stroke, not only did, not only did he give himself in submission to her, but he changed the roles. You heard what it said? The word said, be husband. Well, who's the husband? If she's ask, if if he's asking her to rule him, who's the husband? Which is why, in a great way, a lot of relationships are failing. They're failing because the wrong spirit is there. When in fact, it should be the other way around. The woman should be asking the guy. But what do we live in? What kind of world do we live in? Okay. The enemy has got you all twisted up at the altar. In fact, he's got you twisted up in your mind if you're talking about when you have the conversation, when you have the conversation, about uniting with this person. Your conversation is right, but the action is wrong. Okay? You're going to ask this person to rule you and then get mad when she does. So I'd say that's a dysfunctional relationship. Now, I want to say something. I want to say something. In order for us as humans to get things back together and get things right, we're going to have to get that right. Okay? Because we live in a world now, are you listening, where the women actually think they're the men. Us dark, us dark Americans, we have a problem now. We have a problem now because many of us don't want to get married. Okay? Many of the women want to get married. But guess what they're acting like? They're acting like they're the heads of the household. They're acting like they're the ones in charge just because there's some 
there's a great deal, a great number of them that are doing both roles. Well, here's a news flash. I'm considered a grandmaster. I can tell somebody to take over my class for a day. Does that make them the grandmaster? <laughs> Wait a minute. I could tell my top student, I'm going away for a month. I need you to hold it down. Does that make him the head instructor? So you think, if you're thinking that because you do a thing, that determines your purpose, you are every bit wrong. You know, in our community, y'all see this right here? Y'all see this right here? It's a pair of scissors, right? If you need to unscrew something, you need to make a hole in something. You may reach and find this in the absence of the the tool that you use, and you might use it and be successful turning a screwdriver, turning the screw. If you put them together, you could tackle the Phillips head. If you take right here, tackle the flat head. But is this a screwdriver? <laughs> Y'all not listening to me. This ain't no screwdriver. So, so just because you can use something for a thing doesn't make it useful for the thing. You want the one that's designed for it. it makes the whole job easier. Okay? Now, I want to give you women props, but then again, I don't want to give you props. I want to give you props because many of you are just great mothers. That's just all there is to that. You, whatever happened, happened, and you're, you're doing the deal. All right? But then there's that side that says, that's what you're supposed to do. You, you, listen, you're supposed to raise your, ch your kids. You're supposed to take care and nurture your kids. In the absence, what if, it, what if the man had died? You, you're going to claim, oh, I'm a single mother. I'm a single mother. Okay. One of the problems we have with this world is that we give people credit for stuff that they're responsible for. Okay. When I go to when I when I go to to pay the rent, or sometimes my wife will go pay the rent, and she walks up to the counter and you know we you know because we pay through a, a another situation we don't write checks and all that stuff so you go to the customer service and you go and you put the money in there give them the proper numbers and they bang boom they print you a receipt is there a ticker tape parade that happens no. The cashier don't even say, you're awesome. You're responsible because of your rent. <laughs> no, that's not what happens. Just so you understand, okay? We give people credit for stuff that they're responsible for. And then, you know, we get all, you know, get all in the tizzy when something doesn't happen. Well, guess what? You shouldn't have... No, you encourage people to do what they're supposed to. You give props for those things that are above and beyond. Taking care of your bills, you shouldn't get no kudos for that. You should get the services you paid for. Are you listening to me? So likewise, mothers, you shouldn't get no extra props for raising your kids because that's what you designed to do. In fact, that's probably one of the few things you're doing that you're designed to do. Ain't nobody tell you to go to the moon. Ain't nobody tell you to go and get cars. Ain't nobody tell you to do none of that. If you're a Christian lady, you have one responsibility. Okay? That's to take care of the house. Now, that, that might sound sexist to you or whatever, but let the world talk to you and tell you all kinds of stuff, and that's why you're single. You keep thinking, <laughs> excuse me, you keep thinking that you can follow the curve and you can go with all of these fancy movements and all that kind of stuff. You start doing craziness. You disqualify yourself as a wife. You can't have it both ways. And the same thing with guys. Don't think you can, don't, don't one minute that you can display all your worst attributes 
irresponsibility, abusiveness, you know, horror mongering and all that kind of stuff and expect a good woman to come your way. Don't even try. Okay. It is what it is. You got to qualify for rulership. So if, if it, it, I understand exactly the concept they were talking about, because they were talking about from, from a standpoint, the man had established himself. He had established not only himself as a craftsman or an artisan or whatever he's, his skill set is, but he's established himself as a great person or people love him. And he established himself as leadership material. So, guess what? The man wasn't going to the woman, going to the woman's family and saying. It was the woman's family saying, you have a son, have a daughter, and they only right together. Are you listening? And so the baton was passed. Remember something. God said, whosoever findeth a wife. Okay? which means that he's doing the looking, okay? He's doing the looking. And then he does the determination of the whether she's ready or not, okay? I'm just, am I saying anything that's, that, that's crazy and that, that, that would cause people to be in an upheaval? It is what it is. And when we decide to turn around and get things back right, then the same God that we're praying for, for all this other stuff, will bless our home and will bless our families, will bless our communities and bless our country. Our country is probably one of the most dysfunctional ones on the planet. Oh, yeah, you got freedom. Freedom for what? So you can destroy stuff and people? Uh -uh. No, no, no. Every time you do something funky in a relationship, you destroy a life. Decide that you want to be right. Okay, and don't give somebody else wrong. Give them the right. It only makes sense. All right. So, in the in the uh, in the the uh, subject of relationship, we want to talk about every individual within the unit being the best person they can be. If you're not the best man you can be, step your game up. Point blank. Period. Okay. If you know that you got some habits that need to be fixed, don't don't wait until you get in a situation to start fixing it. Fix it for the sake of fixing it. Same with you women, okay? Work on the work on those issues that you know, look around you. Come on now, look around you and be objective. You know good and well twerking in a public place is not proper. You know good and well showing as much as of of your body as you possibly can. Is not proper. Why? Because it promotes the wrong thing. How can you be so fickle and think that you can just do whatever you feel like doing? It's like you don't have no relationship to nobody. It's like you don't have no relationship to nobody. You just do what you feel like doing, and everybody's supposed to accept it. Now we got folks that that go to the government and tell the government, "Hey, we want some rights." This is what I like to do in my spare time, in my private time, and I'm tired of people not liking me because this is what I do. Really? Legislate morality much? If you don't listen, if you have a problem with how people think about you, that problem is yours and yours alone. Because you can't make nobody like you. You can't make nobody accept whatever it is you're presenting. Okay? I'm getting old. And down through my life, there has been plenty of people that that displayed and expressed a dislike for me. And you know what I did about it? I assessed whether I wanted to be part of that relationship. Okay, it was it was both guys and girls, you know, old and young. There was quite a few. Uh, hey, I didn't I, I didn't get here yesterday. Okay, there's plenty of people that said they didn't like me and this didn't like something I'd done. Okay, so I evaluated whether I wanted to be a part of it. And when I decided not, I turned my back and I got to step in. But it didn't exonerate me from whatever it was that they were offended by. Okay, and I took a look at it and there are some things, it was just blowing smoke. 
See, when somebody's hating on you, you don't need to be around them anyway. But still, if they say something, take it in stride and do some examination. If this thing is true, give with God and say, Lord, I do this. Is this a bad thing? Is this a bad thing? And he'll tell you, he'll tell you where, where it stands. Like there's some people that are incredibly angry all the time. Okay. And when they get with God, God says, no, you just spend uh, attention to detail and you want things to be right. All I need to do is show you how to express it so that you can get things done. See, nothing is wasted, but we just don't go to the right source when we have questions about it. Okay. There are some people, and we know this, and I'm going to wrap this up. There are some people we know that we have no business even trying to have an association with. We'll do it anyway. And then we'll complain about the stuff they do. You need to make us, you need to make sure that you are doing what you need to be doing. And sometimes that means you need to pull away from some folk. If you want to be a successful, every successful person that has ever spoken before people said the same thing. Can they be wrong? Man making multi-million dollars making films every year. And he's saying say he's saying that. What? Um Somebody who's a, a, a prominent preacher with an anointing who's blessing a lot of people. He can't be wrong, right? Wait a minute. Maybe a politician who, for, by and large, you know, in a field of people that's crooked, he's doing the right thing. And people still don't like him. What is he saying? Sometimes you're going to have to sanctify yourself. Pull yourself off to the side and get with God and perfect those things that need perfecting. And whoever don't like it, they can hit the bricks. It is what it is. But if we're going to make a connection, we're going to make a positive connection. We got to start with an understanding. Understand yourself. That's the first thing. And understand what you will tolerate, what you won't tolerate, what you love, what you don't love. Then understand those people that you're in, con in connection with. Because if there's no connection, ain't no need you fighting with it. Okay? Because it's going to get to that point that you want a connection just so that you can win. That's not the right either. Understand the circumstances that both of you come from. And that's read-only memory, okay? That's not so you can go and talk to the person and tell the person, well, I'm doing this because I know that you've been th No, no, no. Just change your behavior, and that'll change the person. When it's time for that thing to come up in conversation, they will be the ones to bring it. And lastly, understand that there's a universal connection. God made so that everybody is connected to someone at some point by something. So you are not by yourself on this planet. You are never alone. It may feel that way sometimes. It may feel sometimes like people don't like you. And you might even think somebody hates you. But guess what? It is still a relationship nonetheless. We all have something that we can get from someone. We all have something we can give someone. We can't force them to take it. If you ask somebody a question, let them answer honestly. Don't try to give them the answer. It's nothing worse than going to an, uh, an interview, a promotion interview, and the person who recommended you is telling you how to talk to that person. If you say one word of their, what they wanted you to say, it is not your true words. You just lied to that interviewer. And let me tell you this. I, I've been through this. I've been through this a couple of times. And when I, was, when I came from my authentic self, I was successful. Be your authentic self. Fix yourself. Don't fix them. Fix you. Make sure you're ready for this. Make sure you're not bringing dysfunction in. And if you notice some dysfunction at all, since once you get in, you're going to have to let your partner know. So you let them know and you go fix it. Say, honey, honey, sir, darling, whatever your pet name is, I need to fix this. I need, I just is what I need. I need you support and I need you to give me some space for a minute. Let me fix that. See, you have to ask. It's called communication. But when you have that vibe, see, when you have that fluidity, it's easy. If you're trying to get the fluidity, it's always going to come off jittery and you're never going to make. Let it happen. Don't make it happen. Let it happen. All right? This is the straight truth. You all have a great day.